Today on the program, we are not, we are not breaking the mold. What? We're not doing anything too crazy. But what we are doing is using one of the final BSG hop lens that I have not used. It is called Nobility. And I have three ounces, so I'll probably better with one ounce. It's got uh, 5.2% uh, citrus, lemongrass, floral, typical real size Pilsner Kolsch. I have one more round of lager yeast, imperial pilgrimage, a seasonal yeast. This particular one was made two months ago, so hopefully it's okay. Um, I'm doing essentially a German Pils, 11 pounds of raw premium Pils, uh, one ounce of that hop and then I'm gonna do a hop stand with a couple ounces at the end to um, maybe get a little more bitterness and flavor and aroma so this is the logo for this BSG blend and it would have to call to mind the noble hops which in a recent video at the end of the hoppy Hellas one once again, I've done this before and I won't do it anymore as I get confused when I hear that term and in my mind I also think of English hops, traditional English hops, but those, if you look it up, you might see somebody call those nearly noble. So, noble hops, Chip is right, does refer to four types of hops. Um, Saz, from the Czech Republic, Spalt from Bavaria, Tettnanger from the Tettnang region of Germany, and Hallertau Mittelfra from Germany's largest hop growing region. Some would also include Hersbrucker Spot and Strissel Spalt, which that is a French one. But the four I listed off are the main four, and you have heard those, you've used those, you know what you're making with those. You're making your lagers, your Hellas, your pills, your box, all that kind of good stuff. Um, the Pilgrimage is a seasonal yeast, wonderful choice for a house lager strain. Clean fermentation accentuates malt profile to create balanced, nuanced lagers. One thing of note is the temperature range is pretty low. Um, in, it's April 8th. And I still have had snow, new snow on my ground overnight, I think, every day this week. Just a trace, and then it disappears. But I tell you what, brothers and sisters, yeah, see, it's gone now. But in the morning, there's bloody snow out there, and it is not fun, and it's getting old. Um, my point is, it's still been chilly, so my basement... The room, my coldest room right now, I looked earlier, is um, 47 or something. So I'll actually be able to keep this beer in the range. So I've got the mash going. The second running's water. They are both heating up. And I need to make a yeast starter. So that's actually what i got to get going on right now. Here it is the next morning, and this is what I want to see in a starter. I'm pretty sure I have footage in another video or two recently where it's just sort of all flat, and you don't have this croisin, you don't have this milky white color, so this yeast is definitely looking like it's behaving like I want to see it. I tell you, people... If you've been watching some of these videos, you've seen my snow piles and snow and cold. And now, we should be beyond this point, but now this is the end of my giant snow pile. That was kind of where I shovel out the area. And it was, you know, three, four feet high. It's almost gone. Oh, thank goodness. All right, so 
anyway, it's been an hour. We're gonna add these. Now, I was thinking, I'm gonna turn this radio off here, give me a sec. I was thinking maybe I don't do a hop stand and maybe I, the thought was I didn't want it to get too bitter with the hop stand and I thought maybe I would just do the, like I have this metal cylinder thing, hop container that I could put in the fermenter even because I'm still using a big mouth bubbler at this point. But then I thought these things are five percent alpha acid so if I do two ounces it's like adding one ounce of a 10 percent alpha acid uh, hop and you know this beer isn't a big beer so that's why I don't want to overdo it on the bitterness but um, I just think it is gonna at least be 1050 so I don't think this is gonna give it too much bitterness and honestly it might give it a pleasant amount of bitterness. A German Pils is going to be, and should be, a little more bitter than a Czech Pils, for example, I think. So, anyway, I'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes and then we'll cool it down. About ready to wrap up the first part of the brew day, aside from the cleanup. It's gonna be coming in around 10.54-ish. Uh, and that is the color. It's all just pills malt, so in the glass it should be pretty light. And I'm, no, I just turned the starter off and look at that. It already just immediately starts flocculating. So we'll get it all nice and swirled up. And here we go. I have pretty good hopes for this yeast and the health of this yeast and this starter like I said if you've been watching a couple of my videos I've had a little bit of trouble with the starters not looking like I want them to and not getting off to a as fast of a start as I like even with loggers but I'm gonna get all this cleaned up and this room over yonder is about 47 Fahrenheit so that should be good and I can also just pull it out here as a spot where I have a you know it's warmer out out there than in this corner closet but so far so good all right we got the nobility pills is ready for sampling and we finally have an opportunity to have somebody sample it. Sorry, I'm standing in front of the light. <laughs> no, look at beautiful. All right. What are you, Nate? Shore lunch. Nate P, I kiss him and throw him back. Uh, here we are. This beer has been in the keg for about five or six weeks. So it's probably sat around a little longer than some of these ones that I get in the keg and then we kind of just get on them right away or as yeah. soon as they get kind of carbonated. But it's gotten pretty clear. I probably did use gelatin, I usually do. It's pretty light in color, light mm -hmm. yellow straw color. It's uh, all 100% raw pills <clears throat> from 1056 to 1.008. And uh, Pilgrimage Lager did a nice job. I washed the yeast from this beer and I'm using that now in this uh, I IPL, which hopefully will. Summer IPL. Summer IPL, warm fermented. So we'll see how that goes. But basically, uh, the hop blends that I've been experimenting with for probably like a couple of years now, all those ones that you've got, uh, Evergreen, Sativia, Sequoia, Sequoia, uh, I don't know if I did the Citra, or is that not one? No, that's, that's an actual sativa. hop, yeah. Sativa. Um, I can't remember the other one either off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of all the stickers I have from that series, <laughs> but nobility. Yeah. Nobility is um, <clears throat> supposed to be more of a traditional, you know, maybe the noble hop kind of range. And you came over a couple weeks ago with it. I think you didn't actually tell me what was in it. And I was like, lemon, lemon peel, mm. lemon grass. And then you told me, we looked it up and you were like, hey. That's what they say. And nice. uh, they you. also say herbaceous. And I'm like, herbaceous. And mm. you looked it up and it's like, of or relating to herbs. So that's yeah. 
pretty broad. Which is weird because like basil, but, thyme, yeah. oregano, these things all are dill. I mean, very different. Yeah, dill. Ba <laughs> yeah, cilantro. I mean, oh, it's like, but yeah. I think I get Our like roots. a pepper, like a black pepper, hmm. a spicy note that I think uh, reminds me maybe of Zaz. So that could be in there a little bit. But because of the way it tasted in this, I used it as kind of a flame out big dose hop and a saison that we will sip. Work. It's pretty young. I wouldn't want to like put it tick for tack, but just saying that like in saisons I like a little spice, a little pepper, and I kind of thought that lemon peel punch might be cool if it works out. If I it guess translates the same. The question that one can ask is why would I use you know this this blend as opposed to just uh, getting. Hollertau, something or other, Hurstbrook or Spall, Pearl, Saz, you know, just why do I get this blend? I mean, I think like sometimes with the blends, you get a wider variety of flavors and aromas than if you do use a single hop or maybe right. even a combination. But, um, you know, this is a simpler beer. Yeah, um, a nice canvas it, it, to see what it tastes it's like. It's not a bad hop blend to mm -hmm. use. It's nice. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I mean, if I was being paid, I would I feel like it tastes right up go this get beer's it. alley, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, it's basically a German Hills with a kind of Germany hop character. German hop blend. And shout out to the Pilgrimage Lager strain, which I was happy with. I think this was the very first time I've used it. I washed the yeast. I'm using it for a second time. I still have another pack, so oh, I might get one. Freshy, freshy. I might get one or two more beers out of this strain, as I hopefully will get this pressurized fermenter and experiment with that. So, I think that's good enough for now. Uh, I'm wrap it up here. <laughs> Cut this out. It's a hot day. It's getting hot. We were going from spring to summer. We're going from like late winter to summer, basically. The stuff is coming up. Yeah. The garden stuff's coming up, and we have a, a nice, clear, cold beer on tap. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Can't beat that, Dono.